Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about the first plugin I ever purchased and used. Around 10 years ago, I purchased a suite of plugins, and this plugin was included in that suite. That suite is the Nick Collection, and the plugin I'm talking about is Silver Effects Pro 2. It is the only application I use whenever I convert and process an image into black and white. Um, as a matter of fact, um, those of you that follow my photography probably remember about a year ago, I did a project where I photographed all the statues at Forest Lawn Cemetery. That project was done in black and white. Every single one of those image, images were processed in Silver Effects Pro 2. And I've been using it a lot lately because I've been doing a lot more street photography and I like my street photography now to be totally black and white, although I used to shoot color and black and white in the past. So I've been using it a lot and I thought I'd share it with you because I haven't done videos on it in a while. Now most often you're probably going to use it as a plugin. It will read JPEG and TIFF files as a standalone application. But if you're like me, you probably shoot RAW. And if you shoot RAW, then you'd use it as a plugin most often in Lightroom and Photoshop. It's also, I think, a plugin in DxO's uh, Photolab uh, software, I believe. Either way, I'm not 100% sure, but in the description below this video, I'll have a link uh, to the Nick collection and you could check it out and read the specs and what it works as a plugin in. I also have a discount code for it and I'll have all that listed in the description below the video. Now as I mentioned most often you use it as a plugin. I have this image here. Uh, it's in Lightroom. Now most often what I do is I do some processing to the image before I send it over into Silver Effects Pro 2. And what I'll do is mostly tone. Um, for example, in this image, if I do a before, you'll see that the shadows are super dark, right? I exposed for the sky. So the shadows are really dark. So what I did was, is I opened up the shadows and I reined in the highlights a little bit. And I just did some basic processing. You may have also noticed that I did some transform adjustments. Uh, the verticals, as you can see, like the buildings are falling backwards. They're a little bit tilted. So I also did some transform control here. I took this vertical slider and moved it to the left. So the buildings are more upright. So I'm ready to send this image over into Silver Effects Pro 2. And to do that, I'll just right click right on the image. I'll go down to Edit In, and then I'll go down to uh, Silver Effects Pro 2. And then you'll come up with this dialog box. So uh, you're gonna wanna use a TIFF. Uh, color space doesn't matter. I have it set to Pro Photo RGB, 16 bits per, to, per component. Resolution doesn't matter either. I have it set to 360 because that's what um, Epson recommends. Uh, I don't know why, but that's what they recommend, and that's what I have there. So I click Edit, and then it's gonna Lightroom's gonna click Create this TIFF file, and then it will open this TIFF file up into Silver Effects Pro 2, and Silver Effects Pro 2 will immediately uh, convert it to a black and white image, and it's just going to need to give it a neutral tone. And when it's a neutral tone, it um, means that it's pretty much just like if you click the black and white button in Lightroom. It doesn't really do anything to it. It just makes it black and white. Now, the first when you first start using um, Silver Effects Pro 2, it's telling you since you're using a TIFF file, it actually can remember your edits so that you could go back in and re-edit it if you want to. And to do that, you need to make sure this little checkbox over here is checked. So you'll get this warning um, all the time until you say do not show again. I'll just click OK and I do have this check box checked so I will be able to re-edit this image. So I'm going to just maximize it right now. Now as I mentioned it just did a just a black and white conversion and there's really nothing special done here. Uh, the controls in Silver Effects Pro are really easy to use and you really could convert an image really quickly and get a really uh, fascinating look to your shot um, very easily. Now what I recommend you do, and I know many people hate it, but just go over to the left and look at the presets. The presets, I could say that probably 90% of the time, I don't just accept a preset right out of the box. What I'll do is I'll take the preset and it's really close to what I want. And then I could come in and just tweak the controls on the right hand panel to get it what I want. And you can see you have a little preview of the presets. And some presets are gonna be like, horrible, right? Like high contrast, uh, smooth, like nobody in the right mind would do that. Even overexposed, um, unless you're going for that specific look, you probably wouldn't want that either. So what you could do is you could just kind of go through it and see something that 
looks appealing, like high structure, harsh. All right, that looks okay. Maybe it's a little too harsh, so I would probably tone that down. But I'll just keep looking, high structured, smooth, and so on. So I'll just keep going through and see if there's anything else. Uh, push process kind of gives you the effect as though you were shooting film. And let's say you had 400 speed film, but you were pushing it to like 1600 or something like that. And um, that's full dynamic range. It's going to be really more hdr -y look, I guess, um, to it. And there's full range, full dynamic, smooth, and so on. So let's find one to start with. Um, this full dynamic range isn't too bad. I mean, to start with, I don't like it as it is. Um, high structure harsh. Let's go with high structure harsh. Now, I like that um, overall, but it, it's a little too harsh, right? So when we look on the right-hand side, you can see as far as global adjustments, that means it's going to affect every single pixel in the image. We have really a brightness control, and you can see there's a little triangle next to these, brightness contrast structure, a little expose triangle. So if you click on it, you could roll it open and you could see that there's sub controls included. So you have one master brightness slider, but then you can affect the highlights, midtones, and shadows independently. And there's also a dynamic brightness here, which means it's not linear. If you go to the right, it's not going to make everything uniformly brighter. It's just going to bring the highlights probably to the point where they're clipping, but not make them clip. Same thing if you go to the left. It's not going to make the shadows clip. It's just going to bring them to the point where they're just about clipping, but not quite. So you could come in here and readjust things as well. And the same thing with the contrast control. You could see that there's amplify whites, blacks, and soft contrast. And then in structure, we also then could just um, affect the structure adjustment to the specific highlights, midtones, or shadows, or fine structure if you really want to bring out some fine detail. I know a photographer that shoots macro and they love the fine structure uh, shot. They're most often shooting macro for um, like a, a kind of like a um, still life type thing. I don't know how to explain it, but it's kind of includes flowers, sometimes insects, and it's more art than it is photography. And they like to use that fine structure control. So for me, um, I just think that everything as far as structure control is just a little bit too harsh. So I'll go right to the master control at the top and just bring it down as well. Then you have tonality protection where you could just not have it affect the shadows as much. Highlights. I kind of liked it where it was though, so we'll leave those down. So you have these controls up here at the top. So you can see how super easy that is to use. Now there's control points. Now I don't think I'm going to need any control points on this image, but what control points allow you to do is to just affect a very specific part of the image. For example, if I grab this control point, you'll see my cursor turns into kind of a bullseye. Let's just put it on like this cloud right here. All right. So I'll click right there and you can see that this little kind of a set of controls comes up by default. It's showing four sliders, three actual controls. And there's a little triangle here. If I click on that, you can see that it folds it all open. If I hover over any of the sliders, it, it tells you what it is. That's brightness, contrast, structure, amplify whites, amplify blacks, fine structure, and selective colorization. That allows you to like bring a little color in. Uh, in this case, I don't want to do that. But the really the, the main control that you should start with is at the very top. This here, well, first of all, when you place it down, that little point, what it's doing, it's looking at the tone and texture that is right under that point. Anything that is that same tone and texture, and if I go over to the right and click here, and is within that circle, will be affected by the sliders below it. So you could specify specific little areas of the image. As a matter of fact, uh, probably a better spot to put this may be the water, right? So it's kind of look at the tone and texture of the water and then it will affect hopefully mainly the water. Now you could see how it's kind of affecting the buildings as well. Probably has similar texture. Well, I could come down here to this and I could bring the area of influence down. So it's just this little circle. Uh, so it's just affecting that area. And then if I want to duplicate this, I could just hold the alt or option key down and I could make another one and put it over there. And then I could just spread these across the water and then resize them as needed. 
and maybe just brighten up that water if I wanted to. Now, typically, that's not something I would do, so I could come in here and delete these. But you could see how you could then just affect a very specific part of the image that you want to affect and not really affect anything else. So those are those uh, selective adjustments that you can do with control points. And you can see that you could roll it open there and you'd get a list of your control points and you could delete them. You could also add color filters. It's as though you shot with a color filter on your lens, like, you know, like that. And I'll click through and you could see that the different, what the color filters do uh, to your image. And some could be more dramatic than others. I kind of like that uh, yellow filter. I think it brightens up that building a little better. You could see that there's details here where you could move the hue slider and it affects different, different tones actually in the black and white image and so on in the strength. You could do different film types, uh, simulate different film types. Uh, right now we're at neutral, but you could see all these lists of different film types you could uh, simulate if you wanted to. I'll just turn that right off. And finishing adjustments. You could do some toning to the image. You could add a vignette. You could burn the image. You could add borders and so on. Now, for those of you that s subscribe to the Ansel Adams zone method for black and white shooting, you have that available here too. If we go down here to the loop histogram area and we click this little expose triangle to open it up. See along the bottom, we have all the zones listed, 0 through 10. And if I hover over a zone, 0, you'll see that you'll get these diagonal lines on that tone, which in this case is black, right? So you can see that there's going to be diagonal lines right there. Now if I go to the right, you can see there's the first zone, second zone, third zone, fourth zone, and so on. I could go through and have all the zones represented and like many um, people that kind of subscribe to this um, zone system they want all the tones from 0 to 10 to be represented in the image and you could do that and you could click on one of these to keep it on so that's on and then I could come in and adjust things uh, to make it either less or more um, you know for that specific tone to spread it more throughout the image or maybe have it a little less influenced on the image. So the zone system is available as well. So um, with this image here, I kind of was playing around with it. Let's go back to clicking right on the preset, bring it back like this, bring structure down just a little bit. Maybe I'll go to brightness and I just gonna open up shadows just a tad. And then I'll go to um, finishing adjustments and I could do the vignette and I most often do to tell you the truth. I'll do it in, um, in Lightroom or if I send this over in Photoshop from, you know, as a plugin, but I could do the vignette here if I wanted to as well. So I'll do a little bit of vignette and I'll click save. So you can see that um, if you uh, kind of swallow your pride and take a preset to begin with you could come over to the right and just tweak it a little bit And it will save you a lot of time And when I did that project where I photographed those statues of Forest Lawn Cemetery because I had so many images It was really a lot faster and a lot easier uh, to pick a preset and then adjust it from there So there's my black and white image of, of this scene um, There's the color image and there's the black and white image. So that's kind of an introduction to uh, Silver Effects Pro 2. I get emails now and then on it, and sometimes people comment on videos, other videos I do for other products, and they ask me about the Nick collection. So I thought I'd do this video, and plus I recently got that discount code to offer you a savings on the product, so I thought um, I'd share that with you as well. Um, probably do a video a week or so on the Nick collection since uh, it's still very popular. It's been out a long time. And uh, maybe I'll do some more on Silver Effects Pro 2 because I mentioned it's my favorite. Another one I really like is Viveza and I'll probably do a video on that very soon as well. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>